Hello and welcome back to the Bearded Hobby Homestead. So today we're back in the marvellous workshop and I have a plan. As most of you know, we've built our own house, well, built onto our own house and the door was built by yours truly. Magnificent and everything like that. Now, there's a slight problem. As you know, when wood gets wet, it tends to do a little twist on you. Now, with a twist and wood, it doesn't really help to just bend it back because it's not steel and it kind of keeps its normal new shape. So the best way to get something to pull back is to have it in warm water, the wood in warm water, in the oven, wrap it with a little cling film, leave a small gap for the steam to escape and have this boil pretty much in hot water or steam and then push it between two straight pieces and have it squeezed and pressed and then it will move back to more of a normal straight shape. Now, this piece I can do, but my door, however, not so much. Let's get back to the door and let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so like I said, this is the door that needs assistance. I'm really hoping I'm in the shot. <laughs> anyway, so at the bottom of this door is lined up, at the back is lined up on the hinges, obviously, but this piece is pulling out. And that's because of the wet wood and everything. So now to do this, putting a hole here, an opposite corner, and that piece of uh, tubing that I showed you earlier, that's going to be on the outside, pulling it back into the whole little straight idea of living and being and supposed to being. So that's the whole plan. Drill two holes here and pull this thing back into straightness. So uh, let's get back into the workshop and cut that whole piece and make it fit and make it pretty. Okay, so that being said, I've got this little piece of pipe here. It's a really thick galvanized-ish pipe that used to hold a piece of fencing and pull the fence tighter. So that is not needed anymore. So I can just remove this piece of fencing. Probably better not to use an ungloved hand, but that's fine. I'll only be using a short piece of this anyway. So right, so now I need to cut this and drill the two holes that I showed you on the door and go and install it and make this door pull straight again. Now as you saw at the top, we have a little gap, a gapish thing that I measured to be about 90 millimeters. That is close to two inches. Uh, 25 millimeters being an inch, that makes it closer to four inches, my apologies. 90 would be about three and three quarters inches, somewhere there. So when I put this on the door, I need this to be around 90 millimeters away from the one edge. That way, it'll pull back. This being strong, not bendy, it'll pull back to that corner. Now, in the middle, I'll be propping it up with a plank or a piece of wood, just to make it sure, make sure that this thing moves away to 90 inches, 90 cents, 90 millimeters. This whole centimeter, millimeter, inch thing, it's got me all kinds of confused. However, I'm, st I'm still gonna go forward with it. So I'm gonna quickly cut this down to size and I'll be back with you shortly.
Okay, so my cuts aren't the straightest, but it's temporary. And uh, I took off some of the rusted layers and took off the burrs from the uh, grinding. So now, go okay, have a punch hole here, punch hole that side, and do some drilling. This is not as fun as I hoped, just because I got lazy during lockdown. Okay, this part is important, really, really important. You need to make sure that your holes are lined up perfectly with each other. Otherwise you have holes going this way and you'll never get them to pull straight on your wood or door in this case. Okay, so keep in mind, we've got a door that needs to look pretty afterwards as well. So you don't want to make a big hole, big enough for something like this. You want to make a hole for something like a thin hole that you can cover up afterwards, after some time, obviously. Okay, so I have my holes drilled, both sides. That can wait for the day. Now you want to get some threaded rod and cut yourself pieces or go through the door with decent washer sizes so not to hurt the wood too much. So back at Casa de la Ocordor, um, this is the way that we need to put this in. I got myself a little piece of wood, shimmy in there, and that should give me a rise on this side for this piece of reinforcing to stand up about 90 millimeters, like I said, and then I can just pull this back. Now understand that this could make this door buckle the other way, that would be fine because that means less of this needs to go that way if this goes more that way. So it's a win-win either way. So I'm going to get to drilling the holes and shimmying in this little awkward one and then we can carry on. Okay, so clearly this one already feels the tension here. Yeah, this side is straight enough. I don't really need to block this any, at, at any stage. This size is big enough. So now all I need to do is get this thing sized in for the right hole. Okay, so I went ahead and gave it a few squirts of water just to make sure that the wood isn't too dry and that could lead to cracking. I've been doing this for quite a while now. Um, the water seems to just get sucked in, so that's a good thing. It doesn't drip, it doesn't pool anywhere, so it's just properly getting the wood moist enough to actually bend again. You don't want to bend dry wood because that's how you break wood. Anyway, so that being said, I think this is good enough for a few twists at the moment. So there, um, this is a G clamp that I put on because we had a bit of wood pulling away from the other piece here. Uh, I put some glue in there and gave it a big old screw in and put the G clamp on just to keep it from pulling apart again for now while the glue dries. So now next step will be pulling on the uh, threaded bolt, threaded rods, and getting it all 
situated to start a good old pull session. And as I'm doing this, I can already see the gap here closing. And this being a round pipe, it shouldn't bend much or at all. So I'm gonna keep doing this for a little bit and we'll see how flat it gets. All right, so if I just look at it, it really looks better. I took off the G-clamp, the glue is dry enough, still sticky, but dry enough. And there's a big screw that goes in to the other piece of wood, so that's keeping it together. Now I can check if I close this door, how much it has pulled back to normality. Okay, so I don't know how much of the last bit you got. That's why I put the new little glue in. That'll dry. And I pulled this thing tight to the point where it's looking a lot better. And when I close this, I can see it's closed off that gap by quite a bit. I'm just grab the tape here. Alright, so I closed that off by around, it should be... Uh, it's a five. So 14 millimeters is what I've closed it with. Looking a lot better already. You can see a difference between that side and that side. That one's moist. That one's still straight. And uh, I'll keep going like this for quite some time. Loosening, putting wedges in. And uh, for now, I need this one to dry. And then next step is do it all over again and then we'll have a door that is no longer skew. So hopefully you learned something with this episode uh, of pulling wood, how to get wood that's bent all straight again. I don't know how much you missed. I'll be able to see in the edit, and from there we will take it forward. But for now, this is us. This is the big old random channel called Bearded Hobby Homestead, and uh, yeah, keep watching. Please like, subscribe. God bless and have a great day. Cheers.